Hey everyone, Rarity Dash here. Time for another Patreon sponsored Blind Reaction. And this one comes to you courtesy of Will, who has requested that I react to the Castlevania Timeline Part 1 Origins of Evil Button Smash by GamerThumb TV. So, yeah, a timeline for the Castlevania series. That sounds like it should be fun. I am a fan of Castlevania, so this is of interest to me. Though for me, Castlevania. The games that I love are mostly the later ones, the Iga era of things, everything from Symphony of the Night to Order of Ecclesia in particular. Um, but I have played some of the other stuff, some of the earlier games too. Just that's what I'm, what Castlevania is mainly about to me. Um, but uh, yeah, interested to see this timeline. It could be a lot of the earlier stuff, though. It could also, I mean, it's probably going to start with uh, since it is a timeline and things have to go in chronological order. Probably going to start with um, that PS2 one. I think it was PS2. The one with uh, Leon, which I can't remember the name right now, but uh, that is where the timeline would begin, I figure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Because um, uh, I assume we're talking the prime timeline for Castlevania and not really go into like the new stuff or anything there. So, uh, yeah, got to start with Leon. And... Uh, and go from there, and we'll see. It uh, this could be this could be pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and get it started. Here we go. Gamer Thumb TV. Mega Man X. Button Smash. Castlevania, one of the most loved video game franchises among gamers. It is a good personal one. Personal favorite above all others. Oh wow! Castlevania tells the story True of the heroic here. Belmont clan and their lineage, who are destined to pass down the magical whip. The moon as the vampire killer, a whip that had the ability to change form and mm -hmm. constantly be upgraded. It's a pretty cool powerful whip. Powerful enough to strike fear into the darkest of creatures. Yeah, including death himself. Yeah, he's in pretty much all the games, King and so is he. Since 1986, Castlevania has spawned multiple sequels, mm -hmm. prequels, remakes, mm -hmm. side stories, and spin-offs. Oh, However, does that really count? Kid Dracula <laughs> made in chronological order, and some have even been taken in and out of the official canon. Circle of the Moon's so a good one, but I guess it. Make sense of the entire story I don't know. Line, including most is it non-canon? While filling in some details between the games. Before we get started, let's establish some rules. Since you may notice some games missing from this timeline. Castlevania Legends has yeah. been taken out of the official campaign. Yeah, which is kind of a shame. Sonya. It directly conflicts with the events surrounding Dracula's hatred of humanity. So, that's out. Some games such as the original Castlevania, Super Castlevania kind of want Sonya to be canon, Castlevania but no. Chronicles are all telling the same story in a different way. So, for huh? the purpose of the timeline, we're just going to pick the original ones. The Fair Order enough. Shadows 2007 mobile phone game is uh, never meant to be canon. Yeah. If it were canon, it would conflict with the original canon. Castlevania. So that one's out too. Castlevania Judgment and Harmony of Despair were just side stories combining the different generations of Castlevania characters into one game. Also never meant to be part of the main timeline. Yeah. Kid Dracula is just a humorous parody of the Castlevania games, not meant to be taken seriously. As far as arcades go, Haunted Castle is seen by many as a different retelling of Simon's adventure from the original Castlevania, and the 2009 Japanese Castlevania arcade has little to no story, and involves nameless generic characters so they're both out too so let's go ahead and get this started welcome to the castlevania timeline part one origins of evil let's take huh? a step back in time to the late 11th century at the time europe was being protected by knights appointed by the church one battalion of knights were so skilled in combat they were said to be invincible because of the efforts of two men Leon Belmont and Matthias Kronquist. Leon was one of the church's fiercest warriors, and Matthias was a genius tactician. Together, they developed a strong friendship, and they led a group of knights to victory time and time. Spoilers, time. Matthias is Dracula. When they returned home from battle, Matthias received devastating news. His wife, Elisabetha, had passed away suddenly <laughs> while he was away. His grief was so intense that he could no longer fight, and he became bedridden. For the next year, Leon continued fighting without his friend, and he discovered an army of monsters in the well, region. Those, <laughs> look at those PS2 he graphics. For permission to destroy these monsters, but was denied due to the Crusades being fought in the East. While Leon was attempting to get permission from the church, his fiancée Sarah was kidnapped. Matthias discovered that the appearance of the monsters was tied to a vampire called Walter Bernhardt. 
who lives in a castle in the forest of Eternal Night, and that Leon Sarah was taken there. Mm -hmm. So he relays this information to his close friend, and Leon decides to leave his knighthood and the church behind in order to go rescue her. This brings us to the year 1094, to the events of Castlevania Lament of Innocence. Innocence. Yeah. On his way through the forest, Leon met a shop owner called Ronaldo Gandalfi, whose daughter Justine was turned into a vampire five years ago by Walter. She had killed her mother and brother and escaped out a window. Using the art of alchemy, Ronaldo built a whip that had the potential to become more powerful, but he was never able to complete it. Regardless, he went after Walter, but the whip wasn't able to hurt him. Walter allowed him to live and let him stay in the forest so he can help others that were trying to face him. To Walter, this was all just a game, and he enjoyed kidnapping women in order to lure powerful hunters to his castle. The force yeah, of who does it? Grief <laughs> can only make me stronger. Thank you. I am grateful. Thinking that Leon could unlock the whip's full potential, Ronaldo handed him the whip of alchemy and enchanted his gauntlet with magic that would allow him to use ancient relics found in the castle. Ready to save Sarah, Leon headed to Walter's castle. I'm coming to save you. Look at that anime hair. It's been, it's been quite a while since I played this game, but I remember liking it. It's good to see the gameplay again. He also discovered that he had to test his strength against five guardians that were guarding the door to Walter's chambers. The snake-headed monster of Greek mythology, Medusa. Mm -hmm. the, that whip is... It's Ronaldo's whip. Still, it's no match for my master! Fitting in for Medusa? Parasite, a golem bound together by rocks, the seductive oh. demon known as the succubus. <laughs> Gotta like her. Armstair, oh. Who craved for revenge against Walter after being locked away by his. Oh, mother. yeah, I remember this after guy. Defeating all five guardians, Leon encountered Walter and attacked him with a whip. Isn't he playable? Like, after the game? Well, it can't be. My attack doesn't work. I see. But it had no effect on him. Taunting Leon, Walter gave Sarah back and went to his throne room. Thinking she was wounded, Leon took Sarah to Ronaldo for help, and he realized she had been bitten by Walter and was slowly turning into a vampire. Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? That's, that's not possible. You're lying. That can't be. But as time passes. Yeah, I don't know why this guy would lie to you. Seems to be your friend. As she was slowly losing her humanity, it was impossible to stop the transformation. Overhearing the conversation, Sarah ran outside and threatened to end her own life in order to avoid becoming a vampire. Ronaldo revealed to Leon that the only way to harm Walter would be to complete the whip. For the whip to gain its true form, it needed the sacrifice of a tainted soul that was willing to merge with her. Oh. Sarah begged Leon to use the whip against her so he can stop Walter and save others from sharing her fate. My soul can save others, and I won't die in vain. I do not want anyone else to suffer my fate. Why? Please. Use the whip against Sarah! I swear to you, no more will suffer your fate! Well, Sarah! sacrificing Sarah to the whip unlocked the whip's full power, and it became the legendary vampire killer. Mm -hmm. the only weapon capable of hurting Walter, and one of the few weapons strong enough to stand against the forces of evil. Fueled by rage and armed with the vampire killer, Leon rushed to face Walter again in combat. 
Welcome. Look at this guy. I have been waiting, Leo. <laughs> Walter, I will never forgive you. I see. It seems you have enjoyed the gift that I gave you. <sighs> yes. Thanks to that, I now have the power to defeat you. Well, that power is quite something. But I am beloved by the knight. I'll kill you and the knight! <laughs> yes, just kill the knight. There's nothing left to protect you. I'll fulfill my promise to Sarah now! Yeah. that he was able to be defeated by human the immortal Walter promised to return to life but as he did the embodiment of death appeared and absorbed his soul hmm. no! oh yeah death was the final boss in this game right I remember that. Transferring the vampire's powers into another person. Yeah. <sighs> Matthias? Leon's old friend Matthias suddenly appeared and revealed that he had manipulated the entire situation in order to get Leon to strike down Walter. Matthias had recreated the Crimson Stone an artifact that could trap the soul of a powerful vampire. Wanting revenge against God for taking away his wife, Matthias was filled with hatred and used the Crimson Stone to gain eternal life and control death itself. Matthias was the reason Sarah was dead. You abandoned humanity? That's right. By becoming a vampire, I obtained eternal life. It was my revenge against God. Mm -hmm. Risked our lives and fought for the sake of God. But God mercilessly stole away the one I loved most. If limited life is God's decree, then I shall defy it, and within that eternity, I shall curse him forevermore. And he offered Leon yeah. the same immortality that he now possessed. But Leon refused, and Matthias said goodbye to his dear friend. Did you not defeat Walter with hatred in your heart, too? Yes, I'd be lying if I claimed otherwise. But defeating him... No. Preventing others from suffering the same cursed fate. That was Sarah's dying wish. And unleash death on him. Mm -hmm. I thought that you would understand. Dawn is coming. Farewell, Leon. Death is all yours. <laughs> Yeah, I remember this fight being pretty cool. After defeating Death with the Vampire Killer, Death reveals that he would return as long as his new master, Matthias, survives. And, and he does. He promises that his bloodline will one day hunt him down and destroy him. Give him this message. This whip and my kinsmen will destroy you someday. From this day on, the Belmont clan will hunt the knight. Yeah.
concludes the events of Castlevania Lament of Innocence. Mm -hmm. After destroying Walter and defeating Death, Leon lived out his life and passed down the vampire killer to his children. All Belmont children would be trained as vampire hunters, and the whip would be passed down generation after generation, in preparation for the day that Matthias would reappear. Matthias went into hiding and eventually used his dark powers to create a castle, which would constantly change form and had a life of yeah, his own. Yeah. To further separate himself from his previous human identity, he changed his name to Vlad Depeche and crowned himself Lord of the Vampires and King of the Night. He recruited anybody that turned their back on God and allowed them to practice dark oh. arts and forbid Gotta recruit to her. his castle. In the 1450s, a boy called Hector was born, who oh. would play a huge role in the future of mankind. He was raised by abusive parents, and the children and adults of the town thought his silver hair and his love of animals was unnatural, so they shunned him. One day, the Poor local Hector. church in the town burned down, and the blame was immediately placed on Hector. In fear for his life, Hector ran away from the town, and an unnatural voice guided him to Vlad's castle. Hector was accepted into the castle, and he was raised within its walls, while learning how to harness dark powers to summon and control devils. Together with another man called Isaac, they became highly trained in these dark arts and were known as Devil Forge Masters. Mm -hmm. During this time, Vlad had also met a kind woman named oh. Lisa, who reminded him of Elizabetha. He fell in love with her, and she loved him, despite him being a vampire with a hatred of anything holy. And, and now we're getting into <laughs> stuff very familiar named Adrian Fahrenheit to for people who have seen the TV show, the Netflix show. Of the human race. Sometime in the 1470s, false rumors began spreading that Lisa was practicing witchcraft, and she was arrested and sentenced to death in the middle of the day. Adrian rushed to his mother's aid, but she stopped him from interfering. She told her son not to hate the humans for what they did to her, and to tell his father that she would always love him. Then Adrian watched as his mother was burned at the stake. This is the event that set the man that was once Matthias on a dark path he would never return from. Yeah. <laughs> In addition to being angry against God, he now decided I like seeing all this manga stuff. He needed to be destroyed. He renamed himself Dracula, meaning son of the dragon or son of the devil. Then built an army of followers in his castle and appointed Hector and Isaac as the generals of his legions and sent them against the people of Europe. Unable to agree with his father's hatred of humanity, Adrian renamed himself Alucard to oppose hmm. his father and refused to fight for him, creating a rift between father and son. These were the darkest times humanity had ever seen. Dracula's forces burned entire towns to the ground, and no mercy was given. The church sent their own armies against Dracula, but nobody ever returned. They had no force powerful enough to stand against the King of Darkness. Yeah. But there was hope. In these devastated lands, a man appeared named Trevor Belmont, mm -hmm. who started fighting back against Dracula's armies. <laughs> I'm glad to see we're using the TV series, even though it is different from the powers that game canon. Feared. The Belmont clan members were known by the church to be powerful vampire hunters, but they feared their power and exiled them from society long ago. The stories of Trevor and the Whip reached Dracula, and he realized that Trevor was a direct descendant of Leon Belmont and remembered the promise his old friend made him almost 400 years before. This whip and yeah. my kinsmen will destroy you someday. From this day on, the Belmont clan will hunt the night. He knew that Trevor and the Vampire Killer were a direct threat to his rule, and he sent Hector with a group of monsters to find and kill him. Hector left on his mission, but he was racked with guilt over the devastation that Dracula was causing and the part he had played in it. Betraying his master, he decided to let Trevor live in the hopes that he would end Dracula. Hector destroyed the monsters that were sent with him and he ran, but not before being seriously wounded. Hector collapsed from the pain, but he was found by a young woman named Rosalie. Rosalie took Hector into her home and slowly nursed him back to health. Hearing more stories of Trevor Belmont's heroics, Dracula realized that Hector had betrayed him and angrily sent Isaac to bring Hector back to the castle to face his punishment, leaving the castle unprotected. This leads us to the year 1476 and the events of Castlevania III Dracula's Curse. Mm -hmm. Which I have not played. So I'm actually interested in this part, especially since this is the story the 
the Netflix show Trevor covers. Trevor made his way through the devastated ruins of the villages destroyed by Dracula's forces and eventually broke through to the outskirts of Castlevania. <laughs> Looks pretty cool. And you can play as more than just Trevor, I know. Which I'm sure we'll get to. Trevor came face to face with a monster who looked oddly human. Defeating the monster, Trevor unknowingly saved a man called Grant Dynasty, who was a pirate helping a rebel group fight against Dracula. The group was slaughtered. Yeah, the guy they left out <laughs> of the TV Dracula. show. To thank Trevor, Grant joined him on his quest. Trevor was no longer alone in his mission. Dracula's son Alucard was also waiting to encounter Trevor on the path to his father. Mm -hmm. After testing Trevor's strength, Alucard was amazed at how powerful the young vampire hunter was, and revealed that he wanted to help Trevor destroy his father and stop the chaos he was unleashing onto the world. Trevor also rescued a young sorceress who had been mm -hmm. turned to a statue named Sypha Belnades, who was part of one of the church's hunting parties formed Got to stop Sypha. That's cool. Together, Trevor, Grant, Alucard, and Sypha fought their way through Dracula's castle and came face to face with death, trying desperately to protect his master. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. While they faced death, Isaac had tracked down Hector, and disobeying Dracula, attempted to kill him instead. Trevor made it to Dracula's throne room and unleashed the power of the Vampire Killer on the King of the Vampires. Oh. After destroying his vampire form, Dracula became a mindless creature struggling to keep itself together. Okay, well that's interesting. I mean, there's always some kind of transformation. That's a weird one, though. Nice. And using his last oh. bit of power, well, that's more what I would expect. A Just a big demon. A final struggle against Trevor. The platforms make it interesting. Trevor had fulfilled his destiny and destroyed Dracula, and his armies vanished with him. Nice. During their battle, Isaac and Hector suddenly felt something and stopped, frozen in shock. They could no longer feel Dracula's presence and sensed that he'd been destroyed. Isaac became enraged and attacked Hector for his betrayal. Defending himself, Hector slashed Isaac, wounding him. Isaac staggered in pain, falling off a cliff to his doom. With Dracula and Isaac both gone, Hector returned to Rosalie's village and she convinced him to stay with her where he could live in peace. But unknown to Hector, Isaac survived his wounds and yeah. stumbled away to plot his revenge against him. After Dracula's death, Grant left to help the devastated areas rebuild. Alucard couldn't bear the guilt of having helped destroy Dracula. Even though he had brought such misery and destruction to the human race, he was still his father and he still loved him. So Alucard returned to his tomb and sealed himself away from humanity. Trevor and Sypha left together and she treated the wounds he had suffered while fighting Dracula. But as he was recovering, Trevor felt uneasy and he couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong, and time would prove him right. Trevor and Sypha became closer and eventually married. With Belmont blood flowing through Trevor's veins and Sypha's magical abilities, their marriage ensured that their bloodline would be even more powerful than they were. Yeah. The Belmont clan became an honored and respected presence in the region. Even though Dracula was gone, 
peace did not come over the land. Famine, starvation, and disease spread, and the people of Europe became violent, with innocent people being accused of witchcraft and burned at the stake regularly. Trevor set out to investigate why this madness was spreading, and discovered that the towns that were closest to the ruins of Castlevania were the ones that were affected the strongest. Trevor realized this was somehow Dracula's doing, and recalled something that happened during his battle with the King of Darkness. With his final breath, Dracula had promised that the world would feel his sorrow and his wrath. Unknown to Trevor at the time, Dracula had placed a powerful curse on the land that slowly crept its way into the mind of the people, driving them mad and causing them to destroy themselves. Back in Rosalie's village, Rosalie and Hector, now married, lived a normal life. Isaac craved for revenge and spied on Hector, constantly waiting for an opportunity to destroy his life. Seeing how happy Rosalie and Hector were together, Isaac decided it was time to strike. Rosalie was a merchant in the nearby town who would sell... I'm interested to, to see how they do all this in the Netflix One show. Because <laughs> we haven't even introduced Rosalie yet. Selling were poisoned. Infected and, by Dracula's uh, curse, the townspeople believed his lies. Worried that Rosalie had been gone for a long time, Hector went into town looking for her and made a horrifying discovery. Rosalie had become a victim of the frequent witch burnings, and there was yeah. no left of her. Hector felt Isaac's presence and knew he was behind her death. Filled with grief and anger, Hector rushed after Isaac and followed his trail to an abandoned castle. This leads us to the year 1479 and the events of Castlevania, Curse of Darkness. Mm -hmm. The other so PS2 one. Isaac. I know you're here! Hector! Is that you? Hector, the fool who betrayed our Lord Dracula. That matters not! I've come to exact my revenge upon you, for the death of Rosalie! Hector found Isaac, and he swore to avenge the death of Rosalie. But Hector had given up his devil-forging powers and refused to use such dark abilities. Without those powers, Isaac knew that Hector would have no chance. Yeah, if you only know the Isaac from uh, the Netflix gone. show, Hector this was him originally. <laughs> Pretty different. <laughs> ...and discovered a strange tomb that was once a site used to summon devils. Hector knew that he needed to reclaim his powers if he wanted to stand a chance against Isaac. My words are great powers of darkness. Immaculate being, appear before me! Okay. After Got a fairy? His powers, a monk who Hector had never seen before appeared, and introduced himself as Zed. Zed claimed that he was there searching for a way to purify the land and oh. free the people. Zed is really death, right? Dracula's curse. And he informed Hector that Isaac had escaped the castle and made his way to a chapel on the other side of the nearby mountains. As Hector chased Isaac through the mountains, he ran into a mysterious woman who strongly reminded him of Rosalie. But to his disappointment, this wasn't Rosalie returned from the dead. Yeah. This was actually a local witch named Julia, who had escaped all the witch burnings happening in the western lands. Julia offered to help Hector on his quest to find Isaac and led him to her shop, where he can find any supplies he would need. Then Hector continued his way through the mountains. It's a cool dragon. Eventually he made it to a nearby temple and encountered a man carrying a weapon that Hector immediately recognized. The Vampire Killer. Mm -hmm. And the man standing before him was Trevor Belmont, the man who had slayed Dracula. That whip! Are you not Trevor Belmont, the one who defeated Lord Dracula? That I am, though I did not fight alone. There were many brave warriors beside me. Yep. Trevor was traveling through the region looking for the source of Dracula's curse. Thinking it was Hector's doing, Trevor attacked him. Could he be? Answer me! Are you the Devil Forge Master? I am. Then this is the hour of your death. I should really clarify that there are two Devil Forge Masters. <laughs> Might spare you this fight. Hector stood no chance against Trevor's might. 
Realizing that Hector wasn't powerful enough to be responsible for the curse, Trevor stopped his attack. Hector told Trevor about Isaac, and both men agreed that they were on the same side, and the two of them parted ways. There you go. After going through several hardships and terrifying monsters, Hector had finally found Isaac, and the two men viciously attacked each other, continuing the battle that they started three years before. But the fight was interrupted by the appearance of Julia, as she tried to stop Isaac, and Isaac escaped. Revealing herself to be Isaac's sister, Julia no. told Hector that Isaac had lost his mind due to the effects of Dracula's curse, but she understood that Isaac was too far gone at this point, and gave Hector her blessing should he need to slay Isaac. Only you can free him from the curse. And also, if you are the one to slay him, only then could I live with it. I understand. After escaping from the battle, Isaac ran into Trevor and struggled to defend himself against the powerful vampire hunter. As Hector found them battling each other, Isaac escaped again. Then Zed, the monk that Hector had met previously, appeared to him again to eagerly offer his assistance in finding Isaac. Perhaps a little too eagerly. Yeah. Hector discovered that Isaac was hiding in a hidden chamber back in the abandoned castle. Hector traveled back there and met up with Trevor, who discovered the passage could only be opened by spilling the blood of a Belmont, and only being skilled with dark powers could enter. He knew Hector was the only one who could enter the passage and reach Isaac, but Trevor had to test Hector and see if he had grown in strength since their last encounter. Show me just how much power you've gained. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I have no reason to fight you. This is your reason. Defend yourself! <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have that excuse for another boss fight. Satisfied with Hector's increased power, Trevor cut himself and spilled his blood onto the floor, opening the hidden passageway. And what lies beyond this point? Do not ask if you knew your heart might waver. For now, hold the image of Isaac in your mind. Think only of defeating him. Hector, hunt him down. And when you have him, show him no mercy. After making his way through the mysterious infinite corridor, Trevor <laughs> encountered the guardian of the passage and destroyed him. It's a cool looking thing. <laughs> But after destroying the Guardian, something completely unexpected happened. Dracula's castle rose again. Yeah. Isaac appeared behind Trevor and wounded him, oh. revealing that he purposely led them to that location. The only way he could resurrect Dracula's castle was to release a massive amount of Some dark pretty power. serious wounding the there. between Hector and the Guardian generated more than enough to bring back Castlevania. Hector rushed to his old home, Dracula's castle, and Julia found him there. Hector knew that Castlevania was tied directly to Dracula's power, so he knew there was a possibility that his old master was alive again. And he knew he would need Trevor Belmont's help if Dracula had returned. But the wound that Trevor suffered would keep him from being able to help. Yeah, so, I mean... We must call Belmont. It is he who slew Dracula before. He can help us now! Alas, he cannot. But why? He suffered a terrible injury. I, I barely saved his life. But even now, it hangs by a thread. I see. The hour is late. Away to your purpose. And you to safety. Back to your home. Hector entered the castle and was determined to stop Isaac at all cost. He found Isaac and decided he would put an end to him once and for all. Hector defeated him and as he was about to strike the final blow, he realized that Dracula's curse was affecting him and causing his thirst for revenge. Do not let the curse take hold of you. I'm certain that she would not wish you to pay such a price for your revenge. This murderous impulse... This thirst for bloody vengeance! This is not me! This is the curse! Dracula's curse! 
Yeah. Hector refused to let the curse take over him, and Zed appeared to him once again. But this time, Zed wasn't there to help. He revealed that he was behind everything, and wanted to use Hector's body to resurrect Dracula back into physical form. But he needed somebody that was completely taken over by Dracula's curse. Disappointed that he couldn't use Hector in his intense power, Zed was forced to settle for Isaac, and decided to use his weaker body for the resurrection instead. And at that point, Hector realized that Zed was something much more than he seemed. Mm-hmm. Who are you? That weapon! You are none other than... <laughs> there we go. Soon thy master will enter Isaac's body. Though you were favored, Isaac will do. Dracula will once more walk the night. And as for you, it is time for you to die. On oh, this fight, yeah, all the death encounters are always interesting. Impossible! A mere human has beaten me. After defeating death, Hector made his way to Dracula's chamber at the top of the castle and hoped he wasn't too late to stop his old master from returning. Yeah, I think you do have to fight. There we go. Ah, the traitor Hector. Lord Dracula, you are reborn. Why did you unleash your hatred upon the humans? When you began slaughtering them indiscriminately, I had no choice but to disobey you. Humans are not worth the air they breathe. The powerful always judge the weak. Thus, I sentence them to extinction. You betrayed me, Hector. And for that, the punishment is death. I will not flee as I did before. Hector was determined to stop Dracula and attacked him. Being forced to use Isaac's body for the resurrection prevented Dracula from returning back to life with his full power intact. Dracula was weaker than before, and Hector knew he had a chance. Surprised by Hector's strength, Dracula called upon the dark powers he had left mm -hmm. in a desperate attempt to kill the man who betrayed him. <laughs> well, that looks cool. Trevor defeated Dracula, and he promised that his curse would remain, but Hector had prepared himself to undo it. My soul may return to the abyss, but the curse will not be lifted. It will fester in the hearts of humans until they obliterate themselves. I am a devil forge master. I can turn your curse aside. Transform it into something harmless, and so it shall be. Rest in peace. Oh. This, then, is the final forge. Heed my words, O oh great powers of darkness! Appear before me now! It is too monstrous! <sighs> And down goes the castle again. The Dark Lord was sent back into the abyss he came from. The curse was gone and the darkness that the world had suffered from for so long vanished. Julia invited Hector to stay with her in her home near the mountains, and Hector agreed. 
living the rest of his days in peace, and closing off the events of Castlevania, Curse of Darkness. Trevor Belmont, having survived his wounds, returned home to Sypha, eventually passing down the vampire killer to his children, hoping it would never be needed again. Join me tomorrow well, about to explore that. a world fearful of Dracula's return. A world in which Trevor's descendants stand vigilant with the vampire killer in hand. In the Castlevania Timeline Part 2, Destiny of the Belmont Clan. Well, that was pretty cool. It's kind of neat uh, seeing it all again. Or, well, <laughs> I guess I knew two out of three games using this one. But, uh... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, yeah, that, that, that was cool. Uh, I haven't really... I mean, it's been ages since I've played either of those games. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's just kind of neat going back there. Um, definitely major nostalgia. And at the same time, I mean, we got like the, the Netflix show, and this has me really thinking about what they're going to do there. And that's, that's kind of cool, actually, seeing again how it all went down in the proper canon. Um, there's a lot already that, <laughs> I mean, obviously they're going in a different direction. We don't have a wife for Hector. Uh, and I doubt we have a sister for Isaac. That would be weird. So I, I just, I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, the motivations are clearly going to be different. Um, and I wonder about the other characters. Like Alucard... I don't think he's going to sleep yet. It didn't really seem like it. So is he going to be involved even though he wasn't in the original? And uh, Sci-Fi, I kind of doubt they'll write her out like they did for the game. So uh, maybe maybe she'll take part of the role that Julia had, though not really, obviously, <laughs> other than being the love interest for Hector. Um yeah, I don't know. That that's really interesting to think about, though. Just uh, what they're gonna do. Also, it, it's making me much more aware just seeing this all back of how vital death was, and how uh, I mean, he's not in the Netflix show so far. So, um, yeah, we don't really have a strong loyal. Uh, I mean, really, Isaac is the most loyal to Dracula, and uh, so just the whole plot of Curse of Darkness. I don't really know. Um, I mean, I guess Isaac could offer his own body to Dracula to, to possess, um, for that ending. Otherwise, I don't know who would really be pulling the strings there. Um, but, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this just has me really excited for season three of Castlevania um, but um, yeah it was also interesting seeing Little Men of Innocence again and seeing how all that, all that went down um, and uh, I mean that stuff was mostly uh, overlooked for the Netflix we didn't really go into it I mean we had a, like a portrait of Leon I think uh, in the Belmont place but other than that um, no real reference to it but, um, yeah, just cool going through this and seeing also Castlevania 3, seeing what that looked like, because that's the one I haven't played, and, uh, looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks very Castlevania. It looks about what I would expect, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool how it's got the different playable characters and just seeing how you kind of defeat different bosses to kind of recruit them. That's, uh, that's cool. And, uh, yeah, yeah, just... Uh, definitely an interesting video. I, uh, as a fan of the series, definitely, definitely enjoyed this. And, uh, I hope you liked the reaction. Let me know if you did. And see you in the next one.